All right. Well, thank you all um, for coming. And today is uh, our fourth um, series in the series of oil painting. So we're going to do a, a portrait today that is going to be a two-parter. So I'll begin the painting today. And then next week, uh, next uh, Tuesday, we, we will have the finishing uh, session for the portrait uh, that we're going to be working on today. So that's that's kind of how that works. If you, for some reason, are able to be here today and can't be there next week, of course, you can always refer back to the recordings and get the second half. So um, that shouldn't be a problem if you have a scheduling conflict. So that's, that's kind of where we're going with this. And um, let's go ahead and take a look at the supplies as I usually start things off that way. So here we have a list of the oil painting supplies in sort of a general way. I mean, your, your usual uh, couple of uh, earth tones, yellow, ochre, and raw umber, and then your three primaries of blue, red, and yellow. And those can be really uh, anything that sort of fits the bill that you might have in your current supplies. I've listed cadmium red and yellow and ultramarine blue, but uh, anything will work. Um, having some paper towels or a cotton rag is always a good idea. Um, I use uh, Windsor Newton liquid and linseed oil as my medium or mediums, depending upon how you like to, to work it. Um, and then a whole bunch of brushes, which I'll go over in, in, the, uh, in the actual demonstration, which we're gonna get started with uh, in a minute. So um, don't panic about the supplies as, as usual. Um, brushes, paint, um, and having some canvas or, or, or wood or paper, as long as it's treated properly, um, can work for oil painting uh, pretty much across you know, any, any subject matter or, or really any uh, medium that you want. As long as you treat your surface right, um, you should be able to, to paint on close to anything with some caveats, of course. Um, okay, so this is what we're gonna be working on. We're gonna be doing a copy, a master copy of a John Singer Sargent uh, painting called Portrait of a Capri Girl, C-A-P-R-I. And um, John Singer Sargent was a painter, an American painter who spent most of his time in Europe um, and was really the, uh, the premier, one of the premier European portrait painters um, in the late 1800s and into the 1900s, if I remember correctly. Um, and his probably his most famous painting is one called Madame X. And it was kind of scandalous because it sort of, uh, it was very tall and it was very kind of monochromatic. There wasn't a lot of color in it. Um, and it, you know, it was a very kind of revealing portrait for that era. Um, so if you've heard of John Singer Sargent, you've probably heard of Madame X. And, and if you want to check that one out, that's kind of one of his, his, uh, his most famous pieces. He's also a wonderful landscape painter, a wonderful watercolor painter, um, probably the best painter of kids, of children that I've ever seen. Um, there was a, a, an exhibit in, uh, in Portland, Oregon, where I used to live, and um, it had a lot of uh, portraits of, of children, and they were phenomenal. Um, if, if you, if you want to look at a, a, a lot of kind of weird art, look for like portraits of children and, and adults usually don't do a great job of painting kids because there's some real subtle anatomical things, but John Singer Sargent figured it out and uh, was able to pull that off um, uh, pretty well there. Uh, as usual, if you've got um, any questions as we're working along here, um, I would love to answer them. Feel free to put them in the chat as we can't hear each other. Um, you can hear me, but I can't hear you. Um, and, and those will be relayed to me. Um, this is my setup here. I'm going to do a few things um, before I get going here. So what I did last week, um, this is a little curry box. You know, if you ever get uh, Indian takeout food, they give you these little boxes or Thai food or something like that. I just put my paint in there from last week put the top on, you know, this is nothing special. You don't have to go out and buy a $30 specialty item if you don't want to, using stuff around, reduce, reuse, recycle, that sort of thing. Um, but I've got all my colors in here and it's pretty much eliminated the air, sorry about that. Um, and it makes the paints 
uh, totally workable, especially oil paints, um, if you can get them out. And so I'm just gonna use uh, my stuff from last week. I've got my paper towel here and all of these paints are ready to go. Honestly, I'm probably only gonna use the raw umber and white probably, maybe a little bit of the yellow ochre. So I'll just get those out for the other ones and then keep the other, other paints uh, on hand in standby mode, circling the tarmac, waiting for touchdown kind of thing. Just put that over there. Um, and before I get actually into the nitty gritty here of painting, I wanna show you something. Um, these are two little uh, sketches that I did. I just sort of superimposed some, uh, some red lines over top of the portrait. And one of the, one of the most intimidating subject matters that you'll encounter if you're, if you're painting sort of realistically is portraits and figures and stuff like that because it's, it's very easy to see things that don't look right on a portrait. You know, if the eyes are too big or the nose is too short or something like that. Um, those are things that are, are really identifiable. And so people worry about making mistakes and, and you know, not getting all the complex shapes right. So what I've done is I've really reduced things here to, to the simplest shapes possible. And I don't do this as a teaching thing, like, you know, I'm, I don't only do it as a teaching thing. This is the way I actually start, would start a painting like this, whether I'm drawing from life or if I'm drawing from a master copy. And that is to make things as simple as possible, to make the lines as straight as possible. So um, the one on the left there with the, with the big, uh, big blockhead there of the Capri girl, um, I've kept everything simple. All I'm trying to do is get the general proportions. This is, she's got a very sort of long, narrow face. So you can see the rectangle I've created there is, um, it reflects that. So I, I just start with that. And then the shoulder, the one shoulder line and the other shoulder line, and then the V-neck um, for her shirt. That's pretty much all I have done uh, to start this painting. And if you saw my um, piece of, piece of canvas that I had set up. That's pretty much what I had drawn on here. And I'll show you that in a second. And then if we move to the one on the right, when you get into the facial features, um, I've just sort of followed the kind of the part of her hair and that sort of curving line right down through the bridge of her nose and right through the middle of her chin. And then I made a line where her eyes uh, go through and then where the bottom of the nose is, where the mouth is. And then um, I think it's time I want to switch to the, um, well, no, I think I'll leave it here. And then there's something called the planes of the face. I want you to think about when you're drawing portraits, this will really help. I want you to think about the face as, as, a, as like a block of wood or a block of marble. Um, so don't think of it as something that's necessarily round, even though it has roundness to it. There are definitive points where the um, face moves from, you know, you can see the front of it to the side of the cheek. You know, so if we look in this one here, you see the bridge of her nose, that is pretty much facing right at us. But if we look at her ear that we can see, her left ear, um, that is clearly on the left side of her face. So spatially, that's, you're seeing the front of her face perpendicular to us. And then the side of her face makes a, a, a basically a 90 degree turn away from us and towards the back of her head. And being able to define where that happens is really important. And on this particular portrait, it happens kind of just, it starts anyway, um, her left eye and goes down her cheekbone. And the way that you can identify how that works is by looking at how the light is, um, is, is painted in this particular case. If you were looking at an actual person, you would see the kind of the front of the face is lit up. It's brighter. It's got a, it's got a warmer and generally a lighter tone. And then as it goes around the face and along that side towards that ear away from us, it gets darker. So that the gradations in value, lights and darks, light and shadow, 
um, is what you're looking for to understand the planes of how to represent the face. So this is something that I really wanna go over about portraiture that is super critical to understand. Um, you know, if you're just trying to go from point to point and, and paint a little light here and paint a little dark here, that's, that can get you only so far. If you understand how this, the structure and the anatomy of the face works, um, I think that's a much uh, a better way to kind of approach it. Um, obviously, you're not all gonna learn about the human facial anatomy in one sitting, but looking at faces and understanding how this works, um, it gives you some, some food for thought. So this is what we're gonna work from. And I am going to boop, put it up here. So you can see, um, this is, this is the, I'm gonna kind of highlight it a little bit here. This is the, the big block that I have established for the face, where the face is gonna be. This is that one side of the shoulder, this here, and then the big V right in the middle. Um, if you look at this, um, if you look at this image online, you'll notice that I have cropped it a little bit. Um, if you look at the original, like her, um, like this shirt goes down to about here on the original. I'm, I'm just cropping that out because I really want to just concentrate on the face. Um, so don't be confused if you see it. I, I think that's the one, but there's, she's got way more of a a blouse on or something like that. Don't worry about that. It's just uh, it's just my cropping of it. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I could do this in paint, but I'll just do a quick sketch in, um, in pencil here so you can maybe see it a little bit. Um, so I've got that, that big block and, and all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna kind of treat it like that if I were a, like a sculptor or a wood carver and I'm just gonna chip away at, at a little bit of the um, overall shape of the face. And once again, you, you're gonna notice as I'm, as I'm doing this, that the lines that I'm using um, to define things is, is they're, they're really straight. And I do that intentionally um, for the reason that it's just easier to understand it. If I tried to get every little curve here, um, it, it would be really tedious going. And I'm just gonna try and establish that hairline there. So I'm just doing a quick little sketch to get things established. And then this nice, this nice little hair, what are these called? Feel free to chat me out here that the hair, they're not ribbons. There we go. Liz says hairband. Hairband, there we go. Ding, ding, yeah. ding. You win the free prize of a portrait class. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's just block this year in. So I'm, you know, I'm just looking with this block, if I've got this block right, then my, then my general proportions, I'm pretty confident are going to be pretty darn close to what I want. Um, because, you know, I can then chip away at, you know, this little negative shape. This is a little triangle down here, this little negative shape of the triangle. And I'm just kind of looking at it in, in with the picture that I have over there. And I'm just kind of comparing this. I mean, if you if you wanted to sort of draw those red lines and use those as a real definitive guide, that's definitely something. And that's why I did them. Um, so you can kind of use the idea that you are just sort of shaving things away. I'm not gonna do all of this stuff here, but what I am gonna do is just kind of establish where the general, and you'll see this a lot with portrait painting, Kind of a kind of a cross right there, and then from here to here to the eyes is generally speaking from the top of the head down to the chin is about halfway. So if you're not if you're confused from the top of the head, not the hairline, top of the head down about halfway is where the eyes are, and then halfway down from that is generally speaking where the bottom of the nose is going to be. 
Um, and then halfway down from that is going to be, generally speaking, where the mouth is. So if my proportions are good with the, with with this this rectangle, and I'm kind of dividing them up, you know, based on that that halves rule for portraiture, um, then you should be in pretty good shape. Keep in mind though that you know, every face is different. Some people have rounder faces, some people have longer faces. Um, so, you know, they're not hard and fast rules. They're just kind of general rules. And the other thing that I'm gonna put in here too is I'm, I'm really just gonna mark where those, those planes are kind of break, broken up here, where that front of the face moves to the side of the face. So, if, you know, if, if it helps, I'll just draw a little arrow here. And then these are going side to side. That one's retreating back. It's moving back in space. This is moving across. Um, and I made an extra line there and I don't wanna confuse you or myself. So I will get rid of that. All right, so that's enough drawing. Um, normally I would have started with, with paint, um, but I wanted to give you uh, kind of a little drawing tutorial there. I don't know if Adrian has done any portraiture yet over in the drawing section, but um, I'm sure It'll be something along these lines. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a smaller brush. Well, actually, I'll just do a mid-sized brush. Sort of a nice round um, synthetic uh, sable brush is what they're called. These are not the, uh, the big uh, chewy bristles like this of the um, sort of the hog hair. These are more of the finer ones. And I'm doing that because I'm kind of gonna be drawing a little bit in the beginning stages here. So I'm gonna just gonna do a little bit of medium and the medium that I'm using is half of the linseed oil, half of the liquid mixed together. And I like that because it allows, um, it allows for the drying time to be a little bit longer. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of brown here and just kind of block things in. I'm ignoring, I'm not, I'm not ignoring them, but I'm, um, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna draw that, that block. I'm just going to deal, the, uh, deal with the general shapes here and kind of just block things in. Sargent made his paintings, you know, so energetic and so effortless less looking, um, but he was masterful drawer. He could, he could just um, take really complicated shapes like, like the human face and the human figure, um, landscapes, architecture, and just kind of rub it in our faces and go, look at how easy this is. If you're John Singer Sargent, um, he, was, he was really adept at the drawing part of it. So drawing, if you're gonna, you know, if, if I had my own art school, I'd probably start with like two or three classes, four classes of exclusively drawing and then probably move into different uh, mediums here. So all I'm doing is I'm just trying to establish the general lay of the land here. And I'm moving around, just trying to establish you know, main construction lines here, how this thing is all put together. So this comes in, that goes down. It's good, I can actually see myself working in it and seeing what it looks like on the, on the screen really helps. And I might even just sort of block in a shadow, at least initially here. And so my goal today is to, yeah, there it goes. Oh, you're back. back. Yay. Maybe I should try that now. I see it go and I go, oh no, but it just comes back. I'll try that. So just getting this collar here, getting a little curve of the neck. And maybe maybe use this this bigger bigger brush here to kind of block in some larger bits if I want to. 
just to kind of just kind of lay in some lay in some bigger areas. Get some more medium on there. You don't have to use the medium. You see me dipping it, dipping it in there. Um, the medium is just really to get kind of a more of a flow to it. And it's by no means a requirement that you use it. Um, if you've got like mineral spirits or turpentine or something like that, and you feel comfortable using that, you could also kind of dilute your paint a little bit with, with that as well. So let's see here. I think this, I'm looking at this jawline. This seems way too long. Like it goes up to the middle. If we, so this is a, this is a good little drawing exercise here. It goes up basically to about where the, I'm just gonna sort of block in the general situation with the eyes here and the nose. Um, just kind of blocking that in. If we look at that, you can see that my jawline comes right up to the middle of the nose if we make a line across there. So it sort of goes up and then turns. That's gonna, I'm, I'm guessing that's gonna be much too high and it is. It should actually come to right about, right about there. So that's something that I can fix right off the bat, which of course is going to make my ear have to move in a little bit. And I, I am a great believer in, you just sort of paint it, put some, put some marks down. Don't be paralyzed by, ooh, is this mark exactly right? Well, chances are it's not going to be exactly right. And you have to be willing to put something down so that you can look, so you can look at it, evaluate it and go, yeah, that works great. No, that's horrible. Um, but don't, you know, don't just sit there and go, oh, I don't know about, eh, mm, ah, uh, uh, you know, you, you just sort of go back and forth. As you get more comfortable with the materials, um, you'll, you'll realize that you're going to be pretty capable um, of, of making corrections as you go, as you go through the whole process here. So don't feel um, paralyzed. Uh, the, the, the worst thing you can do is not do anything and, and not make marks and just, you know, be just kind of sitting there uh, left alone with a brush in your hand that's got paint and nothing's on your uh, and nothing's on your canvas or paper or whatever you're using. So, you know, just try to keep yourself moving. Try to keep marks there. You'll look at it and you'll go, oh, yeah, it's sort of working. It's sort of not whatever. Um, but be willing to make mistakes, be willing uh, to make a mark and, and be willing to correct it if it needs it. So it's kind of, it's kind of a give and take. You got, you got to, you got to put something down in order to, to work with, with it in, in terms of how it relates to everything else. So all I'm doing here is I'm just looking for anything that's sort of a, a darker area. I'm just trying to establish um, a nice, uh, general outline. I also think I made this this part a little bit too skinny, like that. So I'm going to pull that down, get a little more pigment on there, and just find find this neckline Quick. and chin. Quick question. Um, yep. Um, is the medium still necessary for someone who has water mixable oils? Um, no, you can just use water. You can just, I just have a little bit of water and, uh, and use those. Yeah, the medium, the medium, they do, they do have medium for water mixables. Um, I don't use water mixables, not because I don't like them. It's just because I've not used them and I've used oil paints for so long that, um, you know, it's just, it's just easier for me to go with what I know. Um, and if you need to do any um, scraping away, if you remember last week, you kind of take this little chipboard or an old credit card or something like that and, and work into it like that, or even more basic, um, just take a little paper towel. So you can kind of go back and forth. It's, you know, a, a mark, it's not like in cards, you know, if you, you know, card laid is a card played kind of thing. Paint laid is not something you have to live with. You can you can come back and 
and make some corrections. And it's actually pretty vital to the whole process that you do that. Speaking of which, um, we have a request here. If, if you could go over um, how you correct some stuff or how you correct things a little more. Yeah. I think you would find that um, very helpful. So, so let's, let's just, let, uh, here, I'll, I'll do something really messy. I'll just go like this. All right, so here's, you know, light and dark. That's, that's a good general lay of the land, but now I kind of want to go back in here and be a little bit more specific about things. So I'm just going to take my uh, rag or paper towel. I actually prefer a rag, but all I have today is paper towels. So I'm just going to kind of come back and work um, reductively, like kind of like what we did last week, if you're interested in more techniques. So I'm just kind of rubbing out a little bit of the existing paint and, and pulling out and pulling out those highlights and pulling out those lighter areas. Um, and with this, you kind of have to, you have to constantly be moving because um, it does get saturated with paint and you're, you're basically just pushing the paint around a little bit. Um, there's a little bit of a light there. Um, let's see what else. Uh, I could probably come in here. If you want to get a little bit more specific, something like that. And then you can come back with your brush and, and just kind of refine things. That's how I, I kind of work in a sort of back and forth kind of uh, methodology in order to, you know, get things right. And if you can always use your finger, and this is more for blending than for anything else. Is that what, is that, does that help the person that asks? Is that what you're, what you're after? I think so. All right. I hope so. Well, let me know. Let me know if it's if it's not quite right because I can always explain it hopefully a little better. All right. So I, I'm not I'm not going in here to be super detailed at this point. I'm just trying to kind of define um, you know big big shapes and and differences between lights and darks at this at this point. So. You know, don't think of this as, oh, I've got to get all the details in at this stage. This is absolutely not what you want to be doing at this stage. I'm just trying to get lights and darks established. And let's move that over there. That's starting to look a little more portrait-esque. Um, another thing that you can use that I don't have that would be super handy um, would be Q-tips. Just come in here with a Q-tip and kind of dab out a highlight, something like that. Um, the other little trick that you can do to kind of correct things as you go is just take a brush, and I alluded to this last week as well, get a little bit of the medium on there. If you're using the water-based uh, paints, you can just take some water if the, if the paint is still dry and just kind of blot out a little bit of the paint, and it will sort of pull out highlights like that. Let me get in a little bit closer here. I think I got the tilt of the head not quite right still. So let's try and, and I'm, this is something that I always do is I just try and go back to the beginning and go back to the big shape. So I'm just seeing this as the point where it, it kind of starts to go in here. Let's think it needs to go even lower, maybe like that. And then kind of rough out that old line there. So I'm using different brushes for different reasons. This is just sort of to kind of combine a couple areas. I, I usually always have a brush that's not got a lot of paint on it that I use to kind of smooth things out or um, soften little transitions between different areas. And sometimes I'll use, you know, something like this. Just kind of soften it a little bit. So you're kind of just going back and forth. So Mike, we have another question here from Laurie. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of a two in one question. 
Uh, yep. it, first, it's what type of canvas are you using? And also, um, why would you use a different type of canvas? Or could you, would you mind explaining like different types of canvas for different types of oil painting, how that would look? Yeah. Thank so you. I'm using um, I'm using cotton canvas. This is just what's called cotton duck canvas. Um, it's just sort of your standard issue uh, canvas that you would find, you know, pretty common in any art supply store. Uh, Michael's, I believe, sells theirs by the yard if you want to get it. And they also have like individual canvases. Um, and that is a, a really common type of canvas to use. Um, there is linen. Um, linen is sort of the creme de la creme of uh, canvas. Um, and it is, it's just, ma it's made out of flax instead of cotton. And it's just a, it's just a better quality, but it is a lot more expensive. So, you know, if you, you're independently wealthy and you can spend an endless amount of money on art supplies, um, linen is going to be your best bet. But if you're just starting out and you're just learning this and you've got a little bit of a budget as most everybody does, um, cotton canvas is perfectly fine. Um, and, and works great. And that's, that's, that's probably what I use at least half the time. Like, uh, like certainly with bigger paintings, if I'm doing, if I'm doing anything that's got any size to it at all, um, I'll definitely be using uh, cotton because it's just, it's just, it's just more affordable. The other stuff can be really prohibitively expensive but it's really nice to paint on. It's kind of the Rolls Royce of, or the Bentley or fill in your favorite luxury car there. And you, you'll notice also that I've stained this. This is, this is pre-primed canvas. It is canvas that I have, um, stained with a little bit of yellow ochre. Um, and that is, uh, that, that's just sort of my preferred, my preferred uh, way of starting things. Let's see here. There's a little shadow under that. She's, she's looking pretty generally um, in decent shape. There's a little. Sort of pulling that out a little bit, maybe taking this one with a little bit of medium on it, and kind of pull out a little bit of a highlight here. Um, there's a little kind of under. Now I'm getting a little bit more fussy in here. detail oriented if you want to use it that way. Let's see. Just trying to get the general value differences established, trying to get the anatomy right. I mean, those initial lines that I put down there are, are holding up pretty well. There's there's often times where you know you'll you'll get a you'll get a face or or you know, or something that's that's got really sort of strikingly different uh, features and you kind of have to adjust on the fly. Um, but if you go with that that sort of general uh, configuration that I showed you about, you're you're probably going to be in pretty good shape. here. There's this little shadow coming down. I'm just trying to establish. Now I'm getting a, now I'm getting a little bit fussier with my mark making. Um, this is not quite right. This looks like it needs to come over a little bit. Yeah. So.
looks like she's chewing tobacco or something. He's got really kind of puffy cheeks. They gotta, gotta sort that out. And that's, you know, that's that's what you've you've got to be willing to do is just be really, you know, constructively critical with what you're doing. You know, sometimes you get it right and you go, all right, that's looking pretty good. But be willing, is you know, especially if you're trying to get a likeness, um, just be really not mean to yourself, but be willing to, uh, you know, give yourself some constructive criticism. And I think that's a really hard uh, piece of the equation for a lot of people to, to reconcile with is, you know, it's like, oh, this is terrible. It looks horrible. Well, if you don't like it, there's, there's a reason why it's not working for you. I'm going to use a little stick here and kind of pull some, sort of define some edges a little bit. So you, you, you have to, if you don't like it, if something's not working, you have to identify what it is that's not working. Um, and and that, that can often be kind of a, a difficult, a difficult part of it. So Mike, we have so, another- So for question. me, this, this edge here was not working. And it's like, all right, now I think that's a little bit closer, but it's still not right. So I'm gonna keep pu pushing away. I'm sorry, there was a question, go for it. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, so is there such a thing as too much oil on the canvas as there is for watercolor? Um, yeah, absolutely. You can use, there's, there's always, there's always the possibility of kind of going a little bit too far with your materials. Um, so with oil, I would say just do it enough to get the, the kind of the consistency of the paint um, that you need. Um, don't, don't overdo it. Use it, basically use as little oil as you, as you feel like you need to. Um, don't, don't go overboard. Um, cause too much oil is, is, is basically bad for the paint. It's bad for the painting. Oil is, you know, oil is the one component in, in oil painting, um, that is going to potentially kind of wreck the, the material you're painting on. So you, you want to try and be a little bit, um, made her look like a raccoon there, but that's that's actually structurally better. Um, you want to try and, and, and minim, minimize the amount that you put on uh, oil-wise. So yes, there is definitely um, a, an issue with uh, too much oil. Perfect. And we have one more question that just came in. Um, yep. So would the flat, oops, it went away one second. Would the flat canvas with cloth on cardboard be the same as directly on a piece of cotton? Um, I'm sorry, read that again. There was a sure. lot of moving for um, So would the flat canvas with cloth on cardboard be the same as directly on a piece of cotton? So you're saying you put it on you put it on cardboard for like a support, like kind of I've got it taped on a piece of a piece of wood here. Um, so I, I'm guessing that you're saying if you've got it taped on a piece of cardboard, um, that's totally fine. You can definitely do that. And it's you know everything that I'm doing here would apply to that that kind of structure that you've described. If that's the question. Um, I hope so. Yeah. We'll see. I'll let you know if it's not. Yeah. The description that, that of, of a piece of canvas taped on a piece of cardboard, that could work completely fine. That would not be an issue. And everything I'm doing here would apply to that as well. All right. Let's see here. I'm starting to see a little bit of a resemblance now. The eyes are not quite right. Um, one thing that I'm going to do is I am going to, um, you, can, you can do this many different ways. Um, and I am going to use um, some blue. But if you had some black, let's see if I can find it here. Got this brand spanking new set of 
these paints here. This is this, the oil set that I have yet to break out. I've been using the sort of the bigger ones and the more basic colors here. But down here, I've got, I'm just gonna use, I'm gonna use them both. I've got black. Um, actually, that's Payne's gray. Let's not use that. Ivory black, here we go. So I'm gonna put some black down because I wanna get a, a few, um, you know, kind of deeper pigments in here. And I can do it, oh, that, see how that just sort of bled out there. So if that's happening, I'm just gonna do this right on a piece of the paper. And what that'll do is it will sort of absorb all that excess oil because it sometimes separates. The oil and the paint will sometimes separate. Um, the other thing I can do is I can just take some of this blue from last week, which is still perfectly good, and mix that with the brown that I'm already using. So maybe I'll try both and, and see which one we like best. Best. Um, put that aside. Take this black. Looks like you can see the big stain that it left on there. That's a lot of oil, which is fine in small doses, but too much of it can be a bad thing. So I'm going to start doing with this. Is I'll just start with the blue, and I'm going to mix it with the brown kind of make it darker, make a darker color. And well, I'm gonna need my glasses for this bit. There we go. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit more of a darker value in there. Just to give myself, a, you know, one more step uh, of of the tones. She's got amazing eyebrows. It's kind of like Spock eyebrows. So, Mike, um, Heidi would like to know if you have any tips on how to choose oil paints to buy. How to choose? Yeah just how to choose them in general? Um, well, it depends upon what you're gonna, you know, if you're, if you're a beginning painter, I would say get cheap paints. Um, and by cheap paints, you know, that set that I just showed you here, um, this has got 24 colors in it, four trays. And I think it costs like 10 or 12 bucks. That's cheap. Um, they're, they're gonna be sort of student grade uh, colors, but they'll do, I'm, I mean, I'm using them right here and they're working perfectly fine. Um, and I would say, you know, get as few paints as you need to get started. Um, and by that, I mean, you know, get a few earth colors and basically the palette that I showed you in the, in the, the class notes. Um, if you, if you keep it simple like that, it's much easier, um, to keep track of things, uh, than if you've got like a thousand different colors. So, you know, that set is more than enough and it's cheap. So, you know, you get a good amount of paint and you get, uh, you know, you've, you've got more than you'll need to get started. So something like that would be a good start. Um, if, you know, later on when you really start hitting your stride and, and feeling good about the paintings that you're making, um, you know, then you can get the ones that are, are, are a little bit sort of higher grade and maybe cost, you know, three to $5 or more per tube. Um, so it's, it's really depends upon one, your budget and how comfortable you are with painting, um, how serious you're gonna be with it. If, you know, if you're just gonna try it for a weekend workshop or whatever, you know, don't spend a lot of money, but you know, if, if it, it, it just really varies based on experience level and, and, and budget and all those, all those different factors. And but any brand that you find, um, you know, at Michael's or any other art store that you're out shopping at, um, there you're going to see some sort of consistent um, brands out there. You know, Windsor Newton and 
uh, Grumbacher and uh, what are some of the other ones? Gamblin from Portland is one that I use a lot. Um, and they have different grades, you know, they'll have, you know, the same color can be, you know, $10 in a, in a artist grade or professional grade. And then it can be like three or $4 in a, in more of a student grade. So, um, you know, just sort of shop around and, and figure, figure out where you are with all those factors in mind. So now what I'm doing is I'm using less medium, medium and I'm, I'm starting to feel fairly good about the general structure here. Um, so now I'm just going to, I'm going to kind of firm things up. Yeah, she's looking, she's looking human. I mean, it's not, it's not entirely there yet. I think I got a, probably a little bit more space up here than I need. So maybe this gets cut over like that. That seems a little better. Anybody see something that looks funky with this? I can take it. And sometimes other eyes are, you know, like, like, oh, how did I not see that when somebody says something? It's like, yeah, of course. So someone says um, the hairline is off, shifting the angle of the nose. Shifting the angle of the nose. So like. Let's see. We have a couple more. Do you want me to read them out loud? Sure. <laughs> So um, Heidi says, I noticed that there might be more space between the eyes um, in the reference. And Susan says, uh, yeah, um, that's a good one. She needs a longer chin. It's a longer chin. Okay, I'm going to do the eyes first because I see that one because that, that corner comes right to about here and I've only got it coming to right about there. I'll just do that. So for something like that, let me just do this. is a, This is actually a really good exercise here. Um, I'll just try and correct that whole eye because it comes pretty much to the edge. And then down here like that. So, oh, if I had my Q-tip, that would be kind of ideal. But I'll just do this. I knew I would forget something. So Mike, while you do that, another question came in. Um, yeah. Is it important to work um, different sections and give each section a, a break or does that not matter? Um, it, it, that's really kind of a personal preference thing. I like to move around. Um, and the reason I like to move around is because I feel like I, I get a little bogged down if I am, you know, if I try and do the eyes. Having said that, there will be times when I'll, you know, I'll spend 20 minutes or half an hour on one section because I've, I feel like I've gotten the whole thing kind of established, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in, in this situation where I'm, I'm ready to kind of hone in on different areas. Like now I'm just kind of concentrating on that eye because um, somebody brought it up and I, I sort of agreed with that general assessment. So I'm going to, I'm going to spend some time on this eye. But I'm a big believer in kind of, especially early on, moving around and getting a, uh, getting more sort of holistic approach to things. Ooh. Let's see here. So I'm just looking at like, the distance between here and here, that seems pretty good. This one over here, you're right, whoever said that, it was a little bit off. So I'm gonna try and devote a little bit of the last few minutes here to that. And Kind of looks like raccoon eyes at this point. Or... 
a little, a little bit. This one's, this one's this one's coming up a little bit higher too, so I think I need to pull this down slightly. We'll do that. And now I'm getting a little bit fussier with that seems that seems a little bit better. How's that look person who caught that does that seem about right it seems a little better to me. Um, well, the answer um, could you tell us again what size brush you're using right now. Um, well, this one is a number two, this is the one that I'm using to kind of pull out little highlights. So number two, which is pretty small. Um, and then this is a number five, which is the one that I used kind of in the beginning. Um, so, you know, sort of mid-sized brushes to getting a, getting a little bit into the smaller brushes as well. And we're getting a bunch of, um, yep, looks better, looks good. Okay. Don't just say it to make me feel good. <laughs> All right. Still need to go over a little bit, I think. All right, get a little bit of that medium off. I actually like this eye better than this eye. Let's see if I can get the shape of that one maybe a little bit better. Try some of this black, see how that goes. So um, Amrita's asking, are hog brushes better for oils? Um, it, it depends. Hog bristle, it, they're, they're rougher. So the, the kind of marks that they're gonna make are, are much brushier. Um, generally will have a little bit more texture to them. Um, so I, I don't know if better is the right word, but they certainly have, uh, a prominent place in oil painting, but you can use them for um, uh, acrylics just as well. Um, and I would not use them for oil, uh, for watercolors. They're just a little bit too rough and they don't have quite the, the a little bit too much texture. Thanks. All right, let's see here. And another question here, how much will the next coat of paint cover um, the umber outline? Um, it will, I would say it will integrate it. So in other words, the darks are, it's gonna stay dark, um, but it's, it, it might become a little bluer, might become a little blacker. So it's, it's just gonna kind of change, uh, change the color a little bit, but the, but the value, I mean, we're, right now we're really concentrating on, on the values. So that's, that's really kind of what um, today was about was just to sort of get the structure of it, the anatomy of it. And, um, and next time I'll, I'll sort of, you know, like there might be a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit darker black around the eye and, and maybe some blue in the shadow that we can't see right now because I'm not really using any of the blue. Um, so we're, we're going to change the color a little bit, but the, but the values are going to change or are not going to change a whole lot. It's Perfect. actually looking all right. I'm probably going to fiddle with this a little bit after we're done here. Um, but this is, this is pretty close. And this is, this is exactly how I would be working a portrait. Um, I would really try and get the drawing part of it down. And I'm not worrying about color at all. 
And if you've taken a few classes with me, I'll just sort of put in the hint of that little hoop earring. Maybe give us a little bit of jewelry over here. I could come in um, and do a lot of this sort of background stuff as well. Maybe take here, I'll go wider. Uh, there we go. Take some of this. Maybe ha have a little bit of time here at the end to show some, do a little show and tell. I'm just using this big brush to kind of block this in a little bit more. So while you do that, Mike, um, we did have a question at the beginning of the class. It's about color. Um, would you yep. consider cadmium red to be more of a blue red or an orange red? Um, it depends. There's lots of different kinds of cadmium red. So there's cadmium red light, there's cadmium red medium, um, cadmium red dark. Um, cadmium red dark to me is kind of a, uh, they're really bright. Um, they're, I mean, they're really intense and there's, there's not a whole lot of variation. Um, alizarin crimson is sort of a dark red. I would consider that more of a blue red, like a cooler red. Um, I would consider cadmium to be more of a warmer red and more of an intense red. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, we'll put a few more little touches here. I'm gonna still mess with her face. She looks a little too severe and too kind of PO'd. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it a little less, I'm gonna mess with the mouth a little bit, maybe fiddle with the eyes a little bit more. But um, by next week, um, we'll be ready to go with, with the skin tones and, and all the other stuff. So let me just, switch us back here. Um, do we have some people that maybe want to spotlight what they did today? Have a look. We do. Let me see. There's Henrietta. Oh, there we go. So Henrietta. All right. Hold on here. I got to switch my camera. There we go. Oh yeah. Nice. So you did a little black and white as well. Excellent. Then yes. That's that. what's called a grisaille. When you do the, the painting like that, in black and white, it's a gray layer. And that's a really common way to do it. Yeah, that looks great. Nicely done, Henrietta. Claudia? Yeah. Sorry, Claudia. Claudia. Oh, yep, there we go. She's okay. starting to take shape. So you usually look like a little bit of blue in there for the darker, the darker areas there. That's a good idea. Nice. We have good. John. Oh, John. Oh, you did a, a portrait of yourself and some, yeah, yourself and your wife, I assume, or yeah, very nice. Good, 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 good. And then Pop those lights out, uh, bring those highlights out a little bit and the darks are looking great. That looks awesome. Good. Louise. Louise. All right. Hold that up a little bit, Louise, a little bit higher. To your a little level. higher. There we go. Yeah, there you go. Okay, good. Yeah, all right. It's looking good. Just get those shadows established in there, and then you're you're good to go for next time. And, and it looks like you use one of those uh, sort of hard backed pa canvas panels. Those are those are also really good. We have excellent. Um, oh, one second. Jason Eden. Yeah. Oh, a little baby portrait. All right. You're in. You're in. Uh, Dangerous territory painting children, but that looks good. That looks like a baby. Babies have much softer edges. And, you know, adults have really kind of more hard and geometric. So you've got that kind of nice soft transition between dark and light. So that's that's looking good. Yeah, nicely done. So we have Anna, Anna Paris. Yeah, Anna, all right. Anna, you know, you put some white in as well. Very nice. That's what we're going to do next week is sort of bring out some of the real strong highlights with white. So um, you're getting a little bit of a head start with that. Good. Very nice. We have Stella. Stella. Very good. Good, good, good. Nice use of the lights and darks there. And Marina. Marina. Yep. Good. 
Good, you got that sort of nice uh, plane of that along that cheekbone there. That's great. That's the kind of stuff you're looking for. It's this, as the light moves around the object, where does it change from a highlight to a shadow? And, and that's gonna really help you understand the anatomy as well. Great. And Marsha. Yeah. Marsha, oh yeah, very good. Yep, keeping those highlights nice and open and bright. They're gonna get even brighter next week when we bring out the white, so that's perfect. It's a great. Carol? Yep, all right, good. Oh, you're working big, bigger anyway. <laughs> Colleen? Colleen, very nice. Yeah, good, you got the sort of the basic light and dark relationship, you know, maybe fiddle around with that for uh, for another 40 minutes or so just to sort of get the rest of those in there. But that's a great sort of basic layout of the lights and darks. Perfect. I think I'll do two more. Um, Cindy, yeah. we have a lot of people sharing today. Yeah, great. Oh, good. So you went with, went with some whites. Good. One thing, if you're going to mess around with that white is be careful to keep it out of those shadow areas. It'll be like cream in the coffee kind of thing. It'll it'll really kind of muddy it up. So uh, watch watch for that white to sort of stay in the light kind of approach. Very nice, Cindy. Hi, Lori. What do we got here? I don't know why. I don't know where Lori went. Oh, there we There's are. There's Lori. There she is. Yeah, great. Excellent job. Yeah, just. Uh, just maybe make some of those darks a little bit darker and then you'll be ready for next week. That sounds perfect. Looks great. Perfect, Mike. All right. Excellent work as usual. Um, so if you're gonna work on it a little bit more, just sort of keep it in this, in this simple realm of uh, you know umber, maybe a little black. Um, if you wanna add some white to it, be really, really, very selective about where you put it um, because that's that's going to come more next week. But that looks fantastic. And I hope you all can make it back next week when we finish this off or at least do a little bit more. All right. Thanks, everybody. I put see the link in the chat to where you can sign up for next class. So yep. remember to do that and we'll see you then. Thanks, Mike. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.